All right, y'all. I'm bringing out everything, you know, for my Tauruses. You know, Taurus, I guess you're just going to win every single month. You know, month haven't even ended. <laughs> and I did your reading the last out of every other sign and you're still dominating. You know, um, I was in a gym today and spirit was just like, you know, hey, you know, um, do, you know, do a reading for Taurus and do it where, you know, every, you know, e you're going to break down every single week for the month of April that I think this is going to be key for somebody <laughs> that you're going to need that foresight of what's going to, of the breakdown of what's going to happen for, you know, um, for every single um, week. I know uh, in the gym, you know, spirit was just really giving me intuitive messages that, you know, spirit was saying, like, tell Taurus, you know, come out of the closet, come from under the bed, you know, come from out of the darkness that you're hiding because you feel this sense of shame that, you know, I should have known better. I should have you know, no, not to trust this person. And you're staying in this energy of this shoulda, woulda, coulda, and it's consuming you and eating you up. And this person could have embarrassed you. This person could have public, publicly humiliated you. This person could have turned family and friends against you that now you are hiding your face. You're hiding in the closet that neighbors won't see you. You're hiding under the bed that family and uh, friends will not be able to see you, that you are soaking in this darkness because you can't let this go of shoulda, woulda, coulda. And it's like, yes, you should have listened to your intuition when your intuition was telling you things, but you didn't, and that's okay. Now you know, and you need to learn from it. And some of you are putting yourself in so much shame that now you're making it seem as if God is against you, like God is punishing you. And God is like, I'm not punishing you, I'm vindicating you. And you don't see it because you're too busy in this energy of shoulda, woulda, coulda, and focusing on all of the things you didn't do instead of focusing on the things that you did do right and focusing on the fact that you survived and you made it through it from the help of God. But instead of focusing on that, you keep focusing on you know, oh, now because of this, you know, now, you know, because I'm used to a, a two person income and this person left, now it's putting me in a, you know, a bind and all this other stuff. And spirit is like, look, you got to get over this should have, would have, could have, you know, energy. And you got to start, you know, um, you got to get out of this should have, would have, could have energy. And you got to move forward and thanking God for everything that he has done. You know, um, I love the runes. The runes, we're starting off with the overall, it's, it's just going to start with a good overall energy. And it's saying that this rune, it represents journeys, dance of life, order, the larger uh, perspective, and it talks about growth and a maze. This is a journey for you, Taurus. And this journey, it seemed like it's a maze where you are just like, panicking saying, I hope I don't make the wrong turn. I hope that I don't, you know, um, end up making the wrong turn that I end up damaging my life. And it's like, stop focusing on that and look at the larger perspective. And the larger perspective is that God has taken you away from the thing that was harming you. And he is now putting you in the light that you are going to be able to grow and you are going to be able to move past this. But it's so many of you that because you didn't listen to your intuition, you are beating yourself up. And the song that came to me is a song for Mary Mary that I haven't heard in a very long time. And um, it's, it's in my head. Keep in mind, I'm not a singer. You know, don't judge me. Don't judge me on the singer. I'm not a singer. But it's, he's so close, he can hear you breathing. He's so near, he can wipe your tears. Lend your heart, he knows it's been broken. Standing with his arms wide open. For so long, he's been waiting. Every 
day anticipating for you to realize that he's so close to you. I forgot the name of the song, but I know it's from Mary Mary. And I believe it's, uh, everybody knows sometimes we all make mistakes. And when you try to do what's right, wrong gets in your way. You feel you're just a failure and you can't forgive yourself. But God can make it better if you only ask for help. That is the song that is resonating for you, Taurus. That you got to learn how to let it go. And you have to learn that God is right beside you. He's closer than what you think. You think that God is just so far away. You think that God is just punishing you because of a simple mistake you made. And God is like, no, I am here with you. And those are the things that you've got to remember. That will be your mantra. I want you to look up that song and play it every day, right before you pray, right before you meditate, so that you can understand the power of God and learning that he's right there with you. You know, I, I love that chorus. You know, I, I just love it. You know, that, that song is resonating with your energy. And so we got to, we got to, we got to do this thing. He's so close. He can hear you breathing. He's so near. He can wipe your tears. Lend your heart. He knows it's been broken. Standing with his arms wide open for so long, he's been waiting every day, anticipating for you to realize that he's so close to you. Keep in mind, I'm not a singer. You know, that's just, you know, that song is just stuck in my head now that it's playing and playing and playing, and playing, and playing, that, you know, that is the thing that you need to realize, Taurus. All right, we got the cards for the 31st um, through the 6th. What is the card for the 7th through the 13th? Thank you, Ngulu. Thank you, Spirit Guys. Thank you, Ancestors. Thank you, Sarah Banda. Thank you, Arisha. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Ola Dumare. Thank you, thank you, Ola Room. Thank you, Ola Fee. Give me the message that you know, um, that you know Taurus need to hear. You know, get them unstuck. <laughs> get them unstuck. My God, get them unstuck. What is the cards for the 14th through the 20th? What is the cards for the 14th through the 20th? What is the cards for the 14th through the 20th? What is the cards for the 14th through the 20th? Come on, Lord. Yeah, Taurus of Blessing, help them do this. What is the cards for the 14th through the 20th? Oh, why, Taurus? Why? What is the cards for the 21st through the 27th? 21st through the 27th. Incense that's burning is frankincense, myrrh, and sandalwood. What is the cards for the 21st through the 27th? What is going to happen from the 21st through the 27th? Okay. Right. I think that that's good. That's really good. You know, especially compared to the week before that wasn't so good. What is the cards for the 28th through the 4th? The 28th through the 4th. 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 Okay, good. 
card at the bottom of the deck. I, I love it, which is what you don't see coming. It's the Queen of Swords. That God is getting ready to make a judgment. God is on his throne, you know, and yes, it's the Queen of Swords. And people are like, God is not a female. <laughs> God is everything. God is you. God is me. God is the rocks. God is the grass. God is male. God is female. God is everything. Everything on this earth, it is a direct reflection of God. Then when you look at me, you see God. Then when I look at you, I see God. Then when I look at, you know, this house, I see God. When I look at the grass, I see God. When I look at the sky, I see God. God is everything because everything belonged to God and God made everything, you know? And so, yes, you know, God can be a female. <laughs> God is everything. God, you know, if, if there are, you know, males and females on this earth and it said that we are a reflection of God, you know, then yes, God is both, you know, and not none of this manipulating stuff that we have, you know, put in the eyes of, um, that we have put in the eyes of society so that we can control and have dominance over another human being. That we say, oh no, only the men is a direct reflection of God. And the women is a reflection of man because God took the rib out of Adam and formed Eve. And so women are a reflection of you know, man and man is a reflection of God. Boy, put that put that BS somewhere else. Put that shit in the trash can. Nobody not trying to hear that manipulation. Y'all have manipulated women long enough. It's it, the three things that I feel for in this world, in this order. <laughs> and you know, I don't know because the, the first two, I think they kind of both number one. That I feel for women and blacks because we have tricked them and manipulated them long enough throughout the um, throughout the years that you guys will have these things telling women that you are supposed to submit because you came from Adam Rhea that you are nothing but a direct reflection of man why man is supposed to be seen as this God. Because he is direct, he is the direct reflection of God, and it's the women that is the forerunners for religion, for spiritual practice. That it is the women that created these religions and spiritual paths, bringing different members in and making people feel at home and connected. But then you cut her wings and say, but you're not supposed to speak in the church. You're not supposed to be in the power of authority. You're not supposed to do this and you're not supposed to do that. The oppression that we have put on women over the years, it's like, you know, I feel for one. I feel for women. I feel for blacks. You know, the oppression and everything that we have had to suffer going into slavery using the Bible as a form of manipulation, saying that we are supposed to be under the whites. We're supposed to be submissive and we're their footstools. And for years we believed it. Everything was painted white. All of the saints was white. All of the prophets was white. All of the evangelists and the apostles was white. All of the angels was white. That true manipulation and you still see the cause and effect of that to this day. And then the last one would be the gays. Y'all, y'all put the gays through so much shit. <laughs> they can't do nothing. <laughs> Using everything in the Bible at your disposal. Using everything in the Bible as a weapon. While well, God said Sodom and Gomorrah. And then you read Sodom and Gomorrah and you learn that it had, it had nothing to do with gays. It has everything to do with rape. Everything to do with rape. Brutal rape. But we see what we want to see. We hear what we want to hear. We're very selective, especially religious people. We're very selective. And that's why I encourage everybody to go into spirituality because spirituality is going into religion and taking the good 
and leaving all of the BS because I believe that every religion, every spiritual practice has a piece of that truth. But that that's just my little rant. <laughs> I'll be going on some, some side note rants. <laughs> Queen of Swords is what you don't see coming in for this month is that you're going to end up getting um your God is going to make God is going to make a ruling and that ruling is going to end up being justice that you're going to end up getting justice and the way that you're going to end up getting justice is that you have the page of swords here there is going to be some communication that's getting ready to come in that this could be Somebody that harmed you is they're preparing to come in and they're going to deliver a message where you are probably going to be like this person, you, Rashad, you don't understand. This person was so cold, like this person, the way they treated me when they broke up with me, they treated as if they have never loved me and like they never known me, that they treated me like a stranger on the street that they were so cold and distanced that even if, you know, this person didn't like me and didn't like something I did, I wouldn't have expected that response. That was response was completely out of line with according to what we were arguing about, according to what we were talking about. And I think the news that's getting ready to come in is that this person is going to shed light on something where this person somebody could have contacted this person and told them false news about you. And because they told false news about you, this, this person believed it and they ran with it. And they were like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I know Taurus didn't. Not in my house. <laughs> they went crazy. <laughs> that is, it's something in here that you don't know. You know, and it, it's not going to take away the hurt. It's not going to take away what they have done because even with that news, you should have taken that news and you should have handled it in a more mature way. You could have sat down with me and said, hey, baby, you know, so-and-so told me this. So-and-so said he's seen you in a sauna giving somebody some sloppy toppy. <laughs> and it's like you could have sat down and ask me about this. And if you would have sat down and asked me about this, I could have simply told you, I wasn't even at that gym. I don't even go to that gym. I don't know who that person's saying. That this, that it could have been a complete made up lie that somebody told somebody. And because of that, they treated you differently. And they didn't investigate this. They didn't investigate this. They took it as truth. And that hurts. It hurts when you have a bond with somebody that I have proven my worth to you. I have proven what my essence and my aura is. That we have communication, we have understanding, and we have trust. And you allow a nobody, somebody that had nothing to do with us, to come in and sway your decision. A relationship that took me a long time to build with you. And you allowed a stranger to just come in and destroy it just like that. This communication that's getting ready to come in this month is going to end up being the testing of your faith. You have the, the nine of wands. And it's saying that this is going to be the testing of your faith. And that you're going to have to learn how to be persistent. And you're going to have to be resilient. And you're going to have to stand. And, you know, the nine of uh, wands also represents the last stand, which means that this person is probably going to try to come back. And you have the. This is the ten of pentacles. What is that? I thought that was the ten of pentacles. That's the seven of pentacles. Um, but you have the ten of pentacles. That, you know, I think the news that's getting ready to come in, it is going to test your faith. And I think that if you pass it, you're going to end up getting wealth. You're going to end up getting security. You're going to end up getting a family. You're going to end up getting a long-term success with the Ten of Pentacles. 
and it's saying that this is going to end up being a, a new beginning. And for some of you with the lovers, I don't feel like this is going to be somebody new. I, I feel like this person is going to come in and they're going to tell a side that you didn't know about. That is, is something in here that you didn't know. And I, I don't think that the person is going to be lying or manipulating. I don't think that the person is going to be trickery. Tri it's going to be trickery. The, ma the magician and things like that did not come out. I think that it's part of this story that you don't know. The person acted so rash, so irrational, that you didn't really focus on the problem at hand or the source of the problem at hand. You only focused on the byproduct because you like, why is this dude being so crazy and talking to me like this and treating me like this? But I don't think you ever asked yourself, like, what was the source of this? You're still dealing with what happened, but not asking yourself, what was the source of this? Well, it's getting ready to come in this month. Those are the cards at the bottom of the deck. Let's go ahead and get into these weeks. Hey. All right. So first we got the 31st through the 6th, which is um, which is this week because today is the third. And so it's saying that you're experiencing a lot of delays. You know, you have the hangman here that, you know, you feel a lot of delays. You're very stagnant in your energy. You feel a lot of resistance. You feel a lack of control. Um, there's a fear of, um, of sacrifice and that sacrifices letting go of this energy that I don't know if you fear that if you let go of this energy that you're going to let go of him. You know, I don't know if you feel that, you know, um, as long as you're harboring and holding on to this energy, you still have like this weird closure, but you're experiencing a lot of delays, you know, oh, and the hangman is in reverse. I, I forgot to tell you that the hangman is in reverse because I'm like, wait, why is the hangman not upside down? <laughs> because the hangman is always upside down because this is in reverse, but you're experiencing a lot of delays, a lot of delays. And you could be feeling like, oh, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen to me? You know, your finances and everything could kind of be messed up, you know, this week that, you know, you're probably struggling to pay bills, you know, um, but it's definitely a lot of delays that you're feeling the effects of something that happened. You know, you're feeling the effects of, you know, um, it could be magic and witchcraft that you're feeling the effects of it. But greater is he that is within me than he that is within this world. You know, the righteous shall stumble, but we shall not fall. You're not going to fall. You're only experiencing delays. You're stumbling. You, you are not going to fall in this pit. And that's why God is telling you that you need to be patient. The temperance card. You need to be patient. You need to have, you need to have, you need to be patient this week. It's like, even though everything around you is falling apart and upside down, twisting and turning, blowing you to the left, right, up, down, you know, it's like, you still need to be patient, you know, because things are getting ready to happen. For the next week, um, I, it always start on Sunday, ending on Saturday. I just looked at the calendar. That's how my calendar rolled. That's how I'm rolling in this reading. Uh, from the 7th through the 13th, you have the Hierophant. The Hierophant is here. Hey, come on, um, Hierophant. And with the Hierophant here, you're going to end up getting some type of like download. You're going to end up connecting with your religion and you're probably going to end up doing this because of the first week. The first week is going to be so terrible with so many delays, especially when your bank account go into the negative. <laughs> that the first thing you're going to do is, oh, God, help me, Jesus. Oh, you said in your word that the righteous shall not stumble. <laughs> And what you're doing this week because of the stuff that you're going through, you're going to end up getting a download the next week. The next week, you know, God is going to appear in your living room. <laughs> God is just going to appear in your living room. 
whether this is your dream that this is going to end up being something very powerful, you know, with the Hierophant here that, you know, when, when you look at the, when you look at the Hierophant, look at how they're looking at him like, oh my gosh, you're just such a amazing angelic being that your angel is going to reveal itself to you, whether it's through a premonition whether it's through a daydream or whether it's through your actual dreams, that they're going to come in very strong and powerful. It's going to be something that you can't forget. This is going to be a dream that you're not going to forget. And that's how you know when they're divine messages, that God is going to appear. That this could be as you are laying down sleep, that you're going to end up feeling the presence of someone hovering over you and just, you know, rubbing your head or something, you're going to jump up like, oh my gosh, what? You know, that is going to be the presence of this week. This week, you're going to have a divine encounter. There's going to be a, a, a divine encounter that is going to happen the second week of April. And this divine encounter is going to end up giving you the seven of pentacles that you're going to, like I said, the first week, you're going to be sleep. And you're so tired, you're so down, you're so depressed, you're faking the funk. You're going to work smiling and trying to make it, make it seem like everything is okay. But you're really down because you're still in that energy of that shoulda, woulda, coulda. Thinking that God is against you. Thinking that God is just punishing you so much because you did not listen to your intuition. When God said this person is cheating on you, you need to let them go. And you kept that person there. God is like, you served your punishment. You served your punishment by going through the shit that I was trying to prevent you from going through. I'm not going to hold that over your head. This is the what God was telling me in the gym. Oh, now it just came back up because now I know how it fits. Now it makes sense because it fits like that. God was telling me that there's a difference between Saul and David. Saul was the very first king that the Israelites had. And when Saul, they, um, God told um, Saul to take his people and to completely destroy the land and not take back anything. And Saul had other mistakes too prior to this. And they did not take, they, they did not burn everything. They end up keeping things that they wasn't supposed to keep. And because of that, God said, no more. No more. My glory and my anointing from you is going to disappear. It's going to, it's going to be removed because you're very disobedient. This ain't the first time. That was just the, you know, the straw that broke the camel back. And God did not, God didn't mess with Saul anymore. And he raised up David. And so keep in mind, Saul kept things that he wasn't supposed to keep. <laughs> no. David came to the scene and David done, you know, number one, David was a whore and God allowed him to be a whore. And God never said that it was wrong for him to be a whore because he was never punished for being a whore. That David was so much of a whore that even in his last days, instead of taking a sheet to lay over him when he was cold, women will get naked and lay on him to keep him warm. That's how much of a, that's how much of a hoe he was. But it never made it seem as if it was bad for him to be in that condition. That, you know, that was just like, well, it's, it's part of the reward. It's part of the anointing, I guess. But what was wrong was when he ended up sleeping with one of his soldier wives. And then he tried to cover it up by putting him at the front of the battle line so that he can purposely die. And then that's when the prophet came to him. I think the prophet's name was Nathan. I don't know. Uh, but when the prophet came to him and he was like, you know, uh, David, you know, I, I, I have, a, you know, I have a, a question for you. This man had everything in the world. And I'm paraphrasing now. This man had everything in the world. And, you know, it was a man that didn't have much. You know, this man had a mansion and this man only had a little hook. He didn't even have a house. 
you know, he had to dig a little hole in the ground and put straw around it. And that's what he lived. And uh, that's how he lived. And Nathan said that, you know, this rich man took what he had, the little that he had. And David was so furious. David was like, ah! <laughs> that man should die. That man is wicked. Why would you take that when you already have the world? And then I like when the prophet said, he said, David, that man is you. Thus saith the Lord, your ass is about to be punished. <laughs> God made us rule. <laughs> you got the communication that you were looking for. Thus saith the Lord, that man was you. <laughs> you did that. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing that I love about that is that, you know, David was like, ah, that man should be killed. That man should be this, that, you know, I love when the, uh, what, what is the, what is the saying in the Bible? By your, by your words, you are acquitted and by your words, you are condemned. Notice how when Nathan said that, I think his name was Nathan. Don't hold me to it. When he told David that story, he purposely told David that story so that when David respond by his own words, he shall be acquitted and by his own words, he shall be condemned. And based on what he said should happen to that man, the rich man that had everything, God gave him that exact same punishment. By your own words, you are acquitted. By your own words, you are condemned. You better watch what you say. <laughs> better watch what you say. <laughs> By your own words, you are acquitted. By your own words, you are condemned. And so, notice how they both had wrong. And to me, David had more wrong than um, Saul. But yet, God took the anointing away from Saul, but he never took the anointing away from David. And God gave him a choice. God said that I will give you a punishment or man will give you a punishment. And David said, man is wicked as hell with no mercy. God, I'll rather let you punish me because at the end of the day, you're going to have mercy. And God punished him severely. David ended up killing his own brother. David ended up losing his boyfriend. Because <laughs> yes, David was gay. When you, when you read about David and Jonathan, which was Saul's son, the way that David described that man... The way that, you know, you got to think about it in that story that Jonathan went against his own father, who was the king, which means that the king gave you the entire world and you disobeyed your father and you supported the enemy because there was a point now that David knew the anointing was removing from him and that it was going to um, it was going to rest on David. And he so he in his mind, if I kill David then the anointing will stay on me. God will not have another backup. And so now throughout this whole thing, it's a fight between, you know, David and Saul. But even throughout that, David showed his heart by saying that even though this man is trying to kill me, I can't kill you. I can't attack back because you are God anointed. You know, so it's, it's a lot of things that showed the condition of David's heart, which made him so pure. But, you know, in the midst of this, Jonathan protected David with all his heart. Like, you know, when you have someone in your life that is able to give you the world, which was Saul to Jonathan, and you are able to take all of that away and risk it all by caring for somebody, that's a sexual relationship. <laughs> that's a sexual relationship. And then it said that David was a handsome man too. Oh yeah, Jonathan and David was getting it in. Like Jonathan said, nah, that's mine. Now, I know you like all these women, but I'm the only man you're messing with. And he said, that's my honor. <laughs> they were getting it in. And then even when you look at the um, the other book, the, uh, the Song of Solomon, I think that's what it is. The way David described Jonathan in there, I said, this man in love, this man done got him some, <laughs> some Jonathan and don't know how to act. But anyways, <laughs> let's get, you know, you know, it, it, there was a big difference between the two where it's like, why did God take away one person anointing and he didn't take away the other person's anointing? And it was all because of the condition of the heart. You know, 
Saul was very prideful. He was very e egotistical. He was in his ego, pride and arrogance the entire time. And so with Taurus, when you are in this mindset, keep thinking that God is about to punish you because you didn't listen to your intuition. You know, God is like, you know, no, I'm not going to punish you because you have the heart of David, that your heart is in the same condition that David was, that you're the type of person that when you make a mistake, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Instead of being this egotistical person that you're doubling down on it and you're like, I did it. Fuck you, bitch. And I'm going to slap your mama. You know, there's a big difference between the two. And that difference is why when one person made a mistake, they were still elevated, even though they got chastised and punished for what they did. And then when this person made a mistake, they descended and they fell from grace and the anointing left them. And so you're going to rise above this. And that's why for the second week of April, there's going to end up being a divine message that's going to come in. And you are going to go from being asleep the first week to waking up. And you're going to, because now you have a long-term vision. When, when this angel or when this deity when the spirit, when the ancestors appear to you, you're going to have a clear message that is going to put you on fire. And now you have the two of wands, which is saying that you're going to start planning. You're going to start discovering. You're going to end up leaving home, travel. You know, it, there's going to be a lot of progress this week because you end up getting a vision. You end up getting a... A, 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 a powerful vision, a powerful download that you cannot ignore. And it's said that, you know, you're going to quickly change your, that this is going to be night and day with the eight of badness because it talks about quickly. You're going to quickly end up changing your entire um, perception. Okay, I got uh, to get a charger. I, I wasn't planning on it being this long. But I mean, hey, what do you expect? You're going over every week. So <laughs> let me... Um, Charger. Whew, boy, I know how to keep my phone. Uh, I know how to keep my phone dead. <laughs> oh my dang. This phone. This phone stayed dead. Oh, and maybe I'm just, I'm just making this video longer than what it is. Maybe I should pause it. Okay, y'all. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> I keep my phone dead, man. My phone is always dying. So, the second week, you're going to end up, it, it's, you're going to start planning and it's going to quickly, you know, and then you got, you got travel twice, you know, because both the two of wands and the eight of batons, they both talk about traveling. So traveling can mean that there's going to be some powerful movement that's going to happen, you know, um, this week. Or some of you may actually be traveling, whether it's going on vacation or whether it's moving. That um, Because, you know, the two of wands do talk about leaving home. And so maybe you might even end up moving this second week. But regardless, there's going to be some strong movement. And then you have it paired with the seven of um the seven of wands and the seven of wands is all about maintaining control. It's all about um protection. It's all about challenges. It's all about persevering. That is saying that you're gonna put in some work. Like you are about to put in some work. That look, you you taking your wand just like the thing and just ah hitting the ground. That you're toiling and you know you're doing what it is that you're you're supposed to be doing in order to you know, get a good outcome and you have it paired with the empress, which talks about self-development. And this is a really good, strong energy that's saying that the second week of April, you're going to be in the energy of the empress. And it's all because you're going to end up getting this angelic visitation, you know, this righteous visitation. It's going to end up being the ancestors. It's going to end up being a deity. It's going to be an, end up being an angel. It's going to end up being one of the saints. Whatever it is that you believe, this is going to end up being like a powerful visit 
that, you know, this could be one of the powerful dreams that in the dreams you just see clouds and smoke and everywhere and you really feel the presence of God, you know, um, and, you know, it seemed like God is preparing you, um, for what's going to happen the next week, because now the next week you're back in depression, you're back down. You have the, um, eight of cups, which talks about disappointment, abandonment, withdrawal, it talks about leaving behind and it talks about walking away. So in the bottom of the cards, at the, the cards at the bottom of the deck, which is what you don't see coming, it said that what you don't see coming is communication that's getting ready to come in. I believe this communication is going to happen the third week. It's going to happen between the 14th through the 20th. The 14th and the 20th through the 20th, you're going to end up receiving some type of communication or you might, you may, you may end up getting it the second week, the seventh through the 13th and then just feeling the, the energy of it the next week. Because, you know, I didn't even think about that. You got two cards that mention travel in the second week. And so somebody could be traveling to you or you could be traveling to somebody, but somebody is going to come in quickly and they're going to end up giving you a message and it's going to end up being something you don't like. It, it, it's going to end up being another side to the story that you didn't know. But the week of 14th, the, the week of the 14th to the 20th, you're going to be, you're going to be pissy. You're going to, you, you don't want to be around nobody. It's, it's, it's just like the start of the week. The start of the week, though, was a lot of delays that, you know, bank account could have been a negative. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills that you're feeling the effects of this new change. But, you know, the third week is just a little bit different because the third week, you know, you're just kind of dissatisfied with life. You're disappointed. You know, you're going to be extremely disappointed at somebody. And it's all because of some news um, that came in. Yep. Even the clarifiers, you have the... Ace of Pentacles, which the Ace of Pentacles, it talks about manifestation. All of the Aces talks about new beginnings, but this talk about manifestation, that you could have manifested this in, that you said, Lord, I want to know the truth. And so it's coming in that, you know, you look at the hand from the cloud that God is about to deliver this to you. And you have it paired with the star card, which I like the star card as representation is number 17. 17 could be a really good um, number for somebody that this could be a number um, that you keep seeing. And uh, the star card, it talks about, you know, faith, hope, you know, it talks about purpose. It talks about the renewal of something. It talks about spirituality. Um, but the star card, that light is going to be shed on something. And the way that the light is going to be shed, you got the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is somebody coming rush, rushing in. Now, the Knight of Wands is very impulsive, unlike the other Knights. And it's still fast and moving just like the other nights. And so this is somebody that's going to do some very impulsive shit where instead of, you know, coming to you at normal hours, this person is probably going to end up uh, showing up at your doorstep, you know, at midnight, <laughs> middle of the night. I can't stop thinking about you. You know, that's another thing that, you know. Um, God was sharing with me earlier when I was in the gym, when I was focusing on your, um, you guys reading is that there was a big difference between David and, um, and Saul or right, Saul is over here. I got to put Saul over here. Sorry. <laughs> Saul and David, <laughs> you know, um, King Saul, his punishment, he went crazy. He went crazy, very crazy in the mind. You know, I remember when they said he threw the, the javelin or whatever. Dave was over there. He, ah! <laughs> David barely died. He barely dodged that he. <laughs> what do I do? Do I stay here or do I leave? Do I run? <laughs> and so. The one thing about the one thing about Saul is Saul punishment involved um, going from glory to being a footstool. That you know he ended up being David footstool. That God plagued him 
with an illness and it, it started with the illness of his mind that the only time that David, I mean, the only time that Saul was able to get peace is when David came in and he had to play the harp or whatever instrument he played. I think it was the harp. I don't know. <laughs> um, but when David played the harp, it allowed King Saul to finally rest and he was able to go to sleep. And this is the thing that's going to happen to your enemy is that you can say all day, oh, F that person. I don't want that person back in my life over what he did. But you're going to have a choice. But this person is not going to have no choice. They, because they're being tormented in their mind that, you know, whether you see it or not, because you're looking at it like the first week, you're looking at delays in the first week with the hangman. You're probably, you know, hearing from friends or looking at the Facebook that this was something so embarrassing that you went from a, a marriage, a long-term relationship to the person literally posting pictures of the other person and you like, this is embarrassing as shit. Like, even if you wanted to leave me, why can we keep this in house? Like, you could have had a whole nother fa family, got this person pregnant and everything else. And it's like, I don't mind that. I released you. But why can you just keep quiet about this and give me time to process this? This is one of the things that you're going through in the first week that you're like, why are you not fucking letting me process like, I'm trying to move on. I'm trying to move past this. And you're constantly doing shit that I cannot move on. Like, I'm trying to move on. And now I got to look at this bald-headed bitch that you posted up on Facebook. <laughs> you're like, I'm not even trying to stalk you. But people are texting me. Oh, do you see what you see what Michael doing? <laughs> Girl, Michael done posted a whole nother different a whole nother different bitch on this page and it's not giving you rest and so there's a lot of delays on the first week and then we go through this depression on the, the third week second week is very blessed because you're going to end up getting a divine I'm, I'm, I want to keep saying divine intervention but maybe for some people you're going to get divine intervention but this is not divine intervention the second week is specifically talking about a divine encounter that is saying that like somebody is going to be present in your home, that a, a deity is going to come down himself and be with you. An ancestor is going to reveal itself to you. A spirit is going to like the present is going to be very strong in your home that is going to be just like the Hierophant that when you see it, you're going to be at all. That even if you cannot completely see the figure, you're going to you're going to see the shape and the figure and you're going to be like. What was that I just seen? There's going to be a divine encounter the second week and it's going to be a powerful divine encounter like. It's, it's going to end up being a premonition. It's going to end up being a daydream. It's going to end up being a um, it's going to end up being a, 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 a actual dream itself. Or it's going to end up being just directly right in your face. You working at home, looking at TV, and it's boom, I'm here. <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> but there's definitely going to be a divine encounter. I don't know why my mind keeps wanting to say intervention. There's going to be a divine encounter the second week. And I think this encounter is coming because the next week, there's going to be a challenge for you. That there's going to be communication and stuff that's going to come in and it's going to make you disappointed. It's going to make you disappointed. You know, this person is it's, it's going to be so impulsive. It's going to be so out there where it's like this person is going to end up doing something like popping up at your job. And you like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> looking through the blind. Is that that nigga? <laughs> that's him, girl. <laughs> And you like, how he get here? He ain't even got no car. <laughs> he there. <laughs> Deal with it now. But this person is gonna come in very impulsive. All jokes aside, this, it's it's gonna be it's it's not gonna be like your standard thing that most people would do, like send you a text message and say, hey, can we talk? 
you know, can we meet, you know, so-and-so. No, not this person. And it's mainly because it's not the fact, because this person, this could be outside this person's character, and the reason why they're acting like this is because, um, is because their mind is being plagued. Like, this person is, this person is suffering. This person is, it, they're just like David, they're just suffering in their mind. And it's like the more that they hold this information, the more that their mind is being plagued. And so this person is definitely suffering. I forgot I was going to do wisdom cards for each week. Thanks for reminding me, spirit. What is the, I know we, oh, y'all just going to be long. Um, what is the, what is the wisdom card for the first week? What, what do you want to tell Taurus for the first week? Be authentic. Anything else is just exhausting. Let your feelings out, all of them, even the ones that scare you. I like that. I like that. That definitely fits because in that, ah! <laughs> that is why you're going to end up getting the divine encounter the next week is that you are literally going to let all your feelings out. That I think for, for some of you, you're going to end up going to your altar. You're going to end up kneeling, kneeling down in prayer or whatever it is that you do. And you're going to end up having like a release that you're going to be, you, you're going to be like, God, you said that you were going to protect me. You said that you will never leave me and that you will never forsake me. But you allow all of this shit to happen. I'm embarrassed. You know, oh my gosh, that you're going to have such a release that you're going to let out everything. And that's why it's saying be authentic. Stop being this robot. Stop being this thing of what people are telling you to do that people keep getting you in this movement of the robot where they just like get over it. Let it go. But it's like you're going to get out of that and you're going to end up being authentic. That you're, It's going to be something in you that you're going to be so authentic that you're going to end up having a huge emotional breakdown like in prayer. That you're going to let it all out. You're going to let God finally know what it is that you really feel. And that is what's going to end up prompting this divine encounter for the second week. You're going to end up getting a divine encounter because you're finally going to be true and authentic. Look, I got a call coming in. That's how I know. That's a, that's a sign in and of itself. That is what's about to happen. You are about to have a, a breakdown. There's going to be an emotional breakdown the first week of April. And that breakdown is going to prompt your angels, your ancestors to come down. They're going to come down and they're going to say, I'm here. <laughs> no, you said, who was watching you? <laughs> Baby, you finna, like, it's, it's going to be like Elijah in the Bible where when the people was trying to surround him, Elijah was like, Lord, open their eyes. And then now they see all these angels around. You're going to end up getting amazing. It's going to be a beautiful divine um, encounter. Oh, and then now the second week um, of April, which is the 7th through the 13th, the wisdom card is look around and find some signs. The universe is speaking to you, of course, because you are about to have a divine encounter. <laughs> You're going to have a divine encounter this week. The universe is going to come in and see this is music, you know, so the with the guitar for, for me and my religion it's going to end up being Chango. Chango is the Orisha of music. And so it, it could be whatever to you, you know, but to me, it seemed like Chango is coming in. Chango is the God of fire and Chango is the God of lightning. And Chango is one of the Orishas of justice. And, you know, the crazy thing about it is Chango is the Orisha of swift justice. You know, Ochosi is the one that you don't call on unless you know you are 100% right. He's, he's the deity over karma, law enforcement, and then you have Obatala is where he's over justice when it comes to like the courts and things like that. But when it comes to Chango, Chango is swift justice where he like, no, the fuck you didn't. <laughs> and it said that when, Jan when Chango speak, he only speak once. But I definitely, uh, you see, that's why, I did, that's why, um, 
third week when you're going to be depressed because this person is going to end up coming in. What is the what is the oracle card for this one? Someone is in need of your love. Offer it to them. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Boy, I'm not lying. This person, this person is going to end up coming in the third week of April. This person is going to end up coming in the third week of April. And the reason why is because their mind is plagued. Their mind is so plagued. They cannot move on with their life because, you know, Chango is here the second week. Your this encounter is here, and this is part of this person's punishment that their mind is being just is turmoil. That they are constantly thinking about what they did, that they are constantly in regret, saying, I should have never did that, I should have never handled it this way. And now this person, they are coming in because they think that as long as they can get by you, that this will be removed. That is just like what I said with King Saul. The King Saul mind was so plagued that the only time he was able to get rest is when David came in and played whatever instrument, whether it was the harp, the flute, I don't remember what it was, but David had to play it and it was the only thing that could calm King Saul's body down that he was back in a normal state of mind. But everything before that, it was like a reparated mind, that his mind was constantly just being attacked. But I told you, I told you, this is why this person is coming in is because they need you. This person is going to try to love bomb you. This person is going to end up saying, oh, I'm so sorry. I love you. Blah, 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 blah. They're just trying to get back in. They're not even trying to get back in those panties. They're just trying to get back in under the shadow of your wings because they feel that as long as they're with you, they will be, or they're going to end up being protected, that they don't have to serve the karma and everything that God is giving them. And there's a possibility that it is going to be like that, that this person is going through so much withdrawals and things like that, that God is going to put them in a sexual drought in the whole nine yard, that God is really going to plague this person's mind until they come back. And it's not, it, it don't necessarily have to be to come back to be in a relationship. You know, the main thing that I see, they have to come back and they have to deliver some message. Whether that's a message of closure, but I really do feel that it's a side to this story that you do not know. I like when it all come together. I like how every form of divination is saying the same thing. We have the runes. We have the, um, the tarot cards. We have the oracle cards. Everything is connected and saying the same thing. You have the fourth week, which is the 21st through the 27th. You have the three of um you have the three of wands, which the three of wands it talks about preparation, it talks about progress, it talks about foresight. The main thing is that it talks about vision, that you are going to end up having a strong vision the fourth week. Notice how we're going through a pattern here. The first week you're going through delays and stuff like that. The second week you have an encounter and you're good. You're back in depression on the third week and now the fourth week, you know, look at you again, you have vision. But something strong is going to come in on the um, fourth week and it could just be because this person is back that, you know, um, you're going to end up having vision. Maybe you're going to end up having vision on what you need to do, you know, um, with this person now since they're trying to come back. But this person is going to end up, you know, um... The moon, the moon card, the moon card is all about the unknown. The moon card is all about that, that there was something that was hidden from you and now you know about it. And that's the vision that you're going to experience the, um, the fourth week of April is that you're going to have a, you're going to have that knowing this. Now you finally got now the card, card at the bottom of the deck, which is what you don't see coming now is the, um, uh, it's the Knight of cups. And the reason why the Knight of Cups is here, the reason why they're offering your love. We can't make this shit up. I can't make this up. I cannot make this up. 
This person is going to rush in giving you a cup of love. And it's all because of the judgment card. The judgment card is not talking about, well, it, it, it's somewhat talking about judgment. But the judgment card is also the card of an awakening to me. That when you look at the judgment card, see how the angel is blowing a trumpet and the, the people are um, around, you can say those are the ancestors that is lifting someone up so that they can listen to the trumpet. That God is speaking clearly to this person. God is telling this person exactly what it is that they need to do in order to um, in order to get a, a outcome or whatever that they need. That God is talking direct to this person, telling them what it is that they need to do. That this person is going through an awakening. And part of this awakening is turmoil. This person is literally living in turmoil. And so they're going to come rushing in, giving you their cup of love. This person is going to end up seeing you on the third week. But the fourth week, they're literally going to end up trying to give you their cup of love. And it's all because that, you know, they're getting a message. And then you have the devil card. This person is being tormented. This person is being tormented and they are probably drinking, smoking and everything to stop their mind from being plagued. But nothing is working. No matter how much they drink, no matter how much they get high on whatever it is that they're using, that it's not going anywhere. You have it paired with the um, uh, uh, Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles, to me, is, is being represented now you know, it, it never been represented to um this way before. Uh I'm done with testing. Okay. Oh, my son is done with testing. Okay, now I'm gonna have to get on one of these apps to connect these two videos together because the moment my uh my son is homeschooled and he has state testing today, and so he had to um go to the college down the street to do state testing. But um okay, so now I gotta finish this up. Okay, so so this person is a, a, a devil. They're being tormented. And now, you know, I've never seen this before like this, but the, the Knight of Pentacles is being seen as like the angel of death, you know, somewhat like that. But it's not really death. It's just an angel that is tormenting this person. And that, you know, a spirit was even saying like even, you know, you know, that this would be represented as the angel. And even though this is not a body, it looks like a body is hanging over the horse. Like this person is just, you know, drugged out on the horse. Like, please, please stop riding. Please let me go. This person is being tormented. This person is being tormented and they're being tormented because of the three of uh, the three of pinnacles. This person if they want to do a partnership now, teamwork, collaboration, this person is trying to come back in. King of Swords, this person is getting ready to make a head over heart decision. And the reason why they're making a head over heart decision is because they're stuck. They're stuck. They need you. This person needs you. <laughs> and now this person is seeing your strength. <laughs> now you want to see me as a divine partner. Now you want to see that my ancestors don't play. Uh-huh. Sun card. God is shining up on you. And then once again, you got the queen of swords that said that God made a judgment and God gave you justice. You can't make this up. Fourth week is going to be powerful. You're, you're going to have vision. The fourth week is what you're, you're going to decide what it is you want to do. You're going to decide if you want to keep this person or not. Stay present. <laughs> That's where life happens. Fourth week is telling you to stay present. You already have vision. And so it makes sense. You're, uh, you're going to be very present. You're going to be living in the present moment um, this week. The fourth week. Okay, let's go and get this wrapped up because I got to get, get my son. It's already an hour and something. But, I mean, we did go over every week. You have for the last week, you have the Eight of Pentacles, which talks about diligence and hard work. And then you have it paired with the World card, which talks about a completion of a cycle. Is that you done put in all the hard work and now you're going to reap the reward of it. That a reward could be coming in the last week of um, the last week of um, April. You uh, will be having a reward come in because God is going to be acknowledging you for your persistence of, you know, that you dealt with this, you know, when you really didn't have to. You know, yep, you dealt with the delusions. You, you dealt with the illusions 
all the illusions and stuff that was being casted your way from the manipulation, deception, trickery, witchcraft is is done. It is done. That cycle is ended. And so I think uh, May. I think May is going to be looking very beautiful for you. And I'm probably going to end up doing a spread like this for you in May too, because I mean, at the end of the day. Tories, you whooping everybody ass when it comes to views and when it comes to comments. You guys have the most likes. You guys have the most views. You guys have the most comments. Like, I mean, Taurus, you're you're completely set apart. Because I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this reading for anybody else. I'm not. It's too much. It's too much work. It's too much time pulling on these energies. Um. So so yeah. Stop caring about what they think. This is your life to live and love. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I think you're getting back with your partner. Y'all can say all day, oh no, never, this person hurt me. That's, it's not for everybody. But somebody, because this person, they kind of embarrass you on a public level. So a lot of people know that y'all broke up and stuff like that. This last week, y'all are getting back together. Y'all are getting back together. I'm sorry, y'all are getting back together. Stop caring about what they think. Stop caring about what people think because everybody going to be asking you, you getting back with him? Girl, he did this. Girl, he did that. Girl, he did that. <laughs> this is why I hate when people put their business out because, you know, when you finally get to that point that you forgive that person and you give them another chance, you know, the naysayers will, oh my God, I can't believe you did it. You know, but it's like, mind your fucking business. That's why you single. <laughs> but honestly, this last week, this last week of April is saying, stop caring about what they think. This is your life to live. Love and live. You're getting back with this person. You know, um, well, I'll, I guess card at the bottom of the deck for the wisdom card is saying, um, find ways to line up. And not take everything so seriously. So you're, you're definitely, you definitely need to learn how to relax. But I mean, he coming back. I mean, every week you have broken down. We have broken down, you know, um, the 31st um, through the 6th. Where it's saying that, you know, look, you're experiencing a lot of delays. Bank account could be in a negative. You know, it's telling you to be patient. And you're going to end up with the wisdom card is saying you're going to end up having a major breakdown that you could be breaking down emotionally in prayer. And now because of that, the week of the 7th through the 13th, God is going to um, God is going to intervene by you experiencing a divine encounter that you're going to end up seeing God, that God is going to be present in Angel and Arisha, that they're going to be present and it's going to put a powerful fire inside of you and it's going to give you vision on how you need to move forward. And even the Oracle card is saying, you know, look around you for signs. You can feel that universe is getting ready to come to your doorstep. You have the third week, the 14th through the 20th. It talks about disappointment that once again, you're going to be feeling disappointed. And that's because this person is going to come in very impulsively. You know, this could be disappointing for you because the person is going to shock you. They're not going to text you. They're not going to call you. This is going to be unseen unexpected and this person is going to end up coming back in because they're being tormented in their mind someone is in need of your love of course they are you have the um one two three four you have the fourth week you have the 21st to the 27th you're going to have clear vision that what was hidden is now known and you're going to have to deal with that and the wisdom card is saying stay present that's um that's where life happens so you're going to have to make a decision and then you have the last week which is the 28th through the 4th, that is saying that, look, your diligence and stuff like that is coming to an end, that all these illusions and stuff is getting ready to move, and it's saying stop caring about what they think. This is your life to live in love. So there's definitely going to be love coming in for you. The card at the bottom of the deck, which I think is very true for you, is saying find ways to line up and talk, stop taking everything so serious. You know, learn how to relax, baby. But... Help is on the way. You're going to get a divine in, um, encounter um, next week. God is about to be present and God is about to show you that I got your back. And I never left you and I never will and I will never forsake you. I say.